Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. As a reminder, this webinar will be recorded. And if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A box and we will answer them at the end. Today, we are gonna go over the new sugar limits in the National School Lunch Program and the School Breakfast Program. My name is Michelle Bisbee. I am the culinary specialist with the child nutrition team. Um, and I work closely doing administrative reviews with everyone. And I am really happy to talk about this topic today as it has a huge impact on all of us over the next few years. So our agenda today, we are gonna go over the sugar limits. Um, we're gonna talk about sugar in general, the limit changes for the National School Lunch Program, uh, tips for reducing sugar in the National School Lunch Program and School Breakfast Program. We're gonna even look into how the new School Breakfast Program meal pattern can help with reducing your sugar limits. We're gonna talk about some really valuable resources that we have, and then at the end, of course, we will take your questions. So with the new sugar limits, it, it refers to added sugar. So right now we're gonna go over the difference between added sugar and sugar. So the added sugars include sugars that are added during the processing of foods. Foods packaged as sweeteners, syrups, honey, and concentrated juices. Added sugars does not include the naturally occurring sugars that are found in milk, fruits, and vegetables. That's your lactose, your fructose, things like that. So how can I check um, added sugar amounts? Looking at your nutrition facts panel will tell you exactly how much added sugar there is in your food. As you can see looking here, this nutrition facts label says that there is a total of 12 grams of sugar, and this includes 10 grams of added sugars. That is how you can differentiate between the two. And just for a little visual reference, four grams of added sugars, that's equal to one teaspoon of sugar. So in this particular nutrition facts, we have only about two and a half teaspoons of added sugar in one serving. That's quite a bit. So added sugar requirements for national school lunch program and school breakfast program. Currently, there are not any limits to added sugars in the school meal programs. Schools may choose to serve some menu items and meals that are higher in added sugar, um, provided that they meet the weekly calorie limits. However, the final rule for added sugars is going to have two phases. Phase one, we are going to limit our um, high su uh, added sugar in specific products. This includes your cereals, your yogurts, and your flavored milks. Phase two, it actually reduces the overall weekly limits. And we're gonna go more into detail about this next. So the final rule for added sugar is phase one. This will be implemented in school year 25, 26. So we have about one year to work on getting all of our things together. So we're ready for this. Breakfast cereals may have no more than six grams of added sugars per dry ounce. Yogurt may have no more than 12 grams of added sugars per six ounces, and flavored milk may have no more than 10 grams of added sugar per eight fluid ounces. If you are selling flavored milk um, a la carte for middle and high schools, you can have no more than 15 grams of added sugar per 12 fluid ounces. Phase two of this final rule goes into effect over school year 27-28. Schools will be required to limit added sugars to less than 10% of your calories per week in the school lunch and school breakfast programs. This limit is in addition to the product-based limits. So now we're gonna look at some tips to lower the added sugars in school lunch and school breakfast. Of course, one thing we say during just about any presentation, any training we put on is add more scratch cooking. Uh, most added sugars come from commercially processed or prepared foods and preparing items from scratch allows you to control the amount of added sugars in the meal. If you're making the shift to scratch cooking, there's grants you can apply for, healthy meals incentives, full plates, full potential, we are always hosting trainings here at the DOE, um, some in person, and we have a wonderful library of recorded culinary trainings. 
There is the Let's Go Culinary Skills for School Meals training. Maine SNA conferences has a lot of wonderful resources. Of course, this summer, um, School Nutrition Association's annual national conference is in Boston, and we're highly encouraging everyone to attend. And then there's the Culinary Institute of Child Nutrition. But of course, we know that our days are always very busy in school kitchens. So manufacturers are working on making the changes as we speak. Um, the child nutrition programs is a huge market for these manufacturers and they wanna make sure that they still have our business. So of course, cereals um, and other breakfast products are already being reformulated. These changes have prompted the companies to already begin to do this so that they are ready when these standards go into place. But of course, you want to find a balance. Even though manufacturers are reformulating, balancing the processed foods with more scratch cooking will help to ensure that the weekly limits will be easy to meet once they are implemented. So changes to the school breakfast meal pattern and how they can actually help you with reducing sugar limits. Current regulations say that you can credit a meat meat alternate towards your grain requirement as long as the daily minimum grain required requirement is met. The final rule changes this so that it is a combined grains and meat-meat alternate component at breakfast. This removes the requirement to offer a one ounce equivalent of grains each day at breakfast. So how does this help? Less processed grains equals less added sugars and less calories from added sugars. With this change, you will no longer be required to offer grains as a part of breakfast. You can choose to only offer items like cereals, muffins, breakfast bars, just a few times a week, naturally reducing your added sugars. Um, and meat meat alternates can be added to the menu without the concern of having a grain along with it to meet the meal pattern requirements. Of course, we want to still make sure that kids eat the whole grains. Um, not a whole lot of them have whole grains in their diet but focus on the really nutrient dense whole grains versus the ones with a lot of added sugars. So some resources that we have, um, we have the main DOE culinary classroom, healthy school recipes, the child nutrition recipe box. Um, all of these are great, great resources. And we'll go into detail on those a little bit here. So we have the main DOE culinary classroom, of course, we're going to promote this one first because it's our resource. Um, and if you go to the culinary classrooms page, you'll see the link where we have red arrow indicating, and it'll take you to videos and recipes that are available um, to help you with any scratch cooking that you'd like to implement. Um, we have the Healthy School Recipes website. Um, this is a great website that offers you recipes that already contain crediting information and you have the ability to scale the recipe to your needs when you go to the print screen, which I think is a wonderful asset. And then of course there's the ICN Child Nutrition Recipe Box. Um, their recipes are wonderful, also credited. They are in yield of 50 or 100 servings. And of course, recipes for healthy um, kids, cookbook for schools from USA, uh, USDA and Team Nutrition is another wonderful resource. Um, USDA also has um, a resource called Reducing Added Sugars at School Breakfast. Just please note that as of April, 2024, it is under revision right now to reflect the new, uh, the final rule that we have just been discussing. Um, but it is still a wonderful ask, uh, tool to use if you're working on reducing the sugars in your programs. So do I need to do a nutrient analysis? At this time, nutrient analysis is not required. The meal pattern uses food-based standards. Um, you can use the food-based menu planning with a focus on as many fresh scratch items as possible. And I should have corrected this. It says low sodium. It's supposed to say low reduced sugar. Sorry about that. Um, and main DOE uses nutrient analysis if our menu, uh, if a menu flags for risk during an administrative review. If you would like access to this tool, um, feel free to contact us at the child nutrition office and we can send it to you so you can use it to take a look at your menus. 
So let's take some time for questions. We have a message from Katie at the Dairy Council. Oh. She says to let everybody know that if you have questions regarding flavored milk, you may reach out to her. Awesome. Thank you so much, Katie, for that. Um, Katie from the Dairy Council is a wonderful resource when it comes to milk products in the state of Maine. Does anybody else have any other questions? Yes, the recording will be available. Um, it will be re available by the probably the beginning or middle of next week. So can we only serve can we serve only yogurt and will it be fine without a grain? Yes, the new school breakfast meal pattern allows you to interchange the meat, meat alternate and the grain. Whereas in the past, if you were serving, I'm just gonna say a yogurt parfait or yogurt, you would generally wanna make sure you offered granola with it. It is now not required. Of course, the kids might still really like to have that granola with their yogurt, but it is not required. How long will it take for companies to reformulate products like Lucky Charms? So the cereal companies are currently working on this. As of right now, I believe that Lucky Charms specifically is the one they are struggling with the most, but the other ones, I believe they are just about finalized. Um, keep in mind, they do still have a year before that phase one goes into effect because that's school year 25, 26, and we're about to enter 24, 25. Will vegetables be credited at breakfast? Vegetables are credited at breakfast. Um, so try to make this as simple as possible. Back, I'd say four, five years ago, if you were going to serve a starchy veg at breakfast, you had to then serve a vegetable from another subgroup. However, there's been waivers in place over the last few years that allowed you to serve that starchy veg vegetable without meeting any of the other subgroups at breakfast. Moving forward with the new breakfast meal pattern, if you only serve a vegetable one day a week at breakfast, it can be starchy. If you serve a vegetable two days a week or more, you must hit at least two different subgroups throughout the course of the week. So it still has that flexibility for the starchy veg, um, but vegetables are credible at breakfast, yes. Will this affect smart snack rules as well? Yes, it will. Um, like the one specific example I have is in regards to milk. If you are a middle or high school, uh, let me find that number and I will read it exactly again. Um, you can only serve, so if you're a middle or high school and you are selling milk a la carte, which does have to meet Smart Snack standards, they can serve up to a 12 ounce size milk, but it can only have 15 grams of added sugars. Um, of course, these this rule, like I said, goes into effect school year 25, 26, giving them time to make the corrections with the Smart Snacks calculator and things like that. Would smoothie count as a breakfast? It would not, ooh. We I think we're going to have to get back to it. It does contain fruit and yogurt, so it would be as long as you hit the item amount. I believe so. You do, are not able to credit the milk, though, I do not believe. But we will get back to you on that question. <laughs> so the meal pattern goes into effect fall of 2025, correct? The meal, the new school breakfast meal pattern goes into effect this coming school year. So technically July 1st, 2024. So school year 24, 25 is the school breakfast meal pattern. School year 25, 26 is phase one of the added sugars final rule, which is item specific. And then I believe it's 27, 28 or 26, 27 when 
phase two and you have to meet the 10% of your weekly calories can only be from added or can be from added sugars no more. Is the non-grain option a rule now or does that start in the 25, 26 school year? That's the non-grain school op uh, at breakfast starts this next school year. So school year 24, 25. We have another message from Katie from the Dairy Council. She says, beginning with the 25-26 school year, flavored milk processors commit to providing school milk options with no more than 10 grams of added sugar per eight fluid ounce servings. So she says, learn more about the Healthy School Milk commitment at healthyschoolmilk.org. Yeah, the, like I said, the manufacturers, they are really working hard to reformulate their products because the school lunch programs and school breakfast programs is a huge, huge market for them, and they don't really want to lose that much business all at once. So before the question, our PFG rep said that companies will keep sending us what they have in stock, so we could expect to still receive high test lucky charms even after the new limits are in place. Would we be cited if there was an audit at that turnover time? Um, I guess we would have to wait to see how this next year plays out because realistically they have over a year to get rid of the product. Um, so I'm sure if it is a concern among school meal programs that we will be made aware so that the schools will not be faulted if it's out of their control. That's our last one. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to email us in the child nutrition office and thank you. <laughs>